Should have saved that for the video. <laughs> Right. Yeah, no, good, good pun. That's one, what we need. One, two, three. Hello, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome to another episode of Rainer, Rainer and Chow. Wow. That's me playing with my nipples, by the way. Wow, they've got some stretch to them these days. Well, I am a bit overweight these days. It's from drinking all of this stuff. Here I was thinking it was just from over tweaking, but okay, we'll, we'll blame the weight. Plus, I do eat a bit of KFC, which doesn't help. Oh, we actually don't have a KFC here. It is devastating. Oh, no, that sucks. Yeah, you, that's you, you've got, you've got the world problem. beautiful water views and all that sort of stuff, but no, you're going to have no, to go to Adelaide. No deep KFC. fried chicken. Or do you just go to Port Augusta or somewhere, do you? Oh, yeah, just go for a nice two and a half, three hour drive. Actually, no, I think Port Augusta <laughs> is about four hours from here. <laughs> so, well, how bad do you, you want, want that KFC? That KFC, <laughs> stop your complaining and just go, boy. When I was when I used to live in Roma, the closest Hungry Jacks was two hours and Dolby. Actually, no, sorry, that's about. Uh, have you ever done that? Have you ever hours. done a two-hour drive to get Hungry Jacks? No, but I knew people that would do it. They'd do it on a Friday night thing. They'd finish work and a group of them would jump in the car and drive the. It's about just short of three hours down to Dolby. Because yeah, I used to live in hours. I used to live in Inverell in New South Wales like twenty years ago, and actually no, it's thirty years ago. Crikey, that's how old I am. And we used to drive from Inverell for an hour and 15 minutes to Glen Innes just to get a hamburger. <laughs> Mate, the things you do in life. I know. So what's today's topic, Chow? So today I want to talk about the difference or you know, the preference between your traditional petrol engine race cars, supercars versus the modern electric supercars and general cars. So... Obviously, being in the country town, I've had a little bit more free time to myself where I've been doing a bit of Googling slash YouTubing because I've got to read anything I want to watch a video and been enjoying the uh, introduction to electric cars. So, I, 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 I'm a big fan of electric cars because I've been told because of the way electric motors work, it's a very instant power base. Once you plant your foot, it just freaking goes, they reckon. There's no delay. Well, that's it. All your mechanism is right there the electricity that you supply to it which is the speed of light that's what's controlling it whereas your petrol engine has a whole series of combustion and moving parts and link linkages and stuff like that yeah. Yeah, yeah it's got a whole heap of production line to get to that power so yeah your power is much more direct now i've just recently watched one on a new four-wheel drive f1 car so all-wheel drive electric motors and it was to the point that taking it around the track was enough G-force to make some of the drivers pass out. So, wow. And because you've got a lot of the weight sitting right near your wheels where your motors obviously are, you've got a lot more pressure where your traction is. You've got four individual motors running those things instead of having your traditional drive chains and stuff and two-wheel drive. It's just insane. The cornering ability of them. The speed and they can, do all -wheel, they can do all-wheel drive very easily too. That's it. Just throw more motors in. Just makes it yeah. faster. But the, then the, you the, only, the, only, the, the only weird concept to me is is the th theory of let's take uh like a car like the Audi R8 right, which is a pretty pretty advanced supercar, okay, or a Bugatti or any of those type of things, a McLaren, and we know that they do naught to one hundred in like two point eight seconds, three seconds, stuff like that. Now. Some of the Tesla cars in there are not far off that sort sort of speed. They're pretty quick. And the supercars I'm talking about are faster again. But yeah, the concept the concept of doing that without that vibration and that shaking and that sound and that roar or that roar or that you get through your chest and all that. I mean, how weird would it be? Just like zzz. <laughs> and that's it. And that is yeah a big thing too. Go. That's my electric motor. But, <laughs> but I'm all the way down there now. Going very fast. You may never <laughs> heard it, but it happened. But yeah, no, and obviously your era and definitely still my era, I grew up with the classic cars and such and the difference between your epoxy little four-cylinder Toyota Echoes versus your nice V8 muscle cars and even just the difference between your classic cars and your modern Okay, game. okay, okay, okay. All right, how about this then? What, what would you do in this scenario though? I offer you... Two cars for free. Which one are you going to pick? I, I'm going to give you a Ford Mustang GT or 
you can have the top of the line Tesla. Which car are you going to pick? Look, I'm I'm probably going to go the Mustang because yeah, because you like V8s. That's why you like that feeling. Everyone loves it, man. You I, can't take I do it love away. The I do love that roar of the engine, the sound, the feel. It is all part of the experience. I love my classics, so you're going to have me with a Mustang there. And See, most going, importantly, I'm... my biggest issue is the battery capacity. These vehicles are great. They can do incredible things, but they are 100% limited to a battery. If you don't have access to a spare battery at your stopping point, you have to wait to charge it. Whereas refueling a car is put that nozzle in, you might have the slowest pump in the world, and it might take you five minutes, and your engine is, your fuel tank is full, and you've got hundreds of kilometers to go again. Electric car, yeah, you pull up, are. you have a break for hours. Let's face it, man, that's the real downside of electric cars. You got to find a charging station, and when it, even if you do find a charging station, you're looking at 45 minutes to recharge your car. 45 minutes is a long time sitting around doing nothing. Yeah, that's it. You've got a lot of downtime, and that's a good charge time. Some of them are hours. Some of them are overnight charges. Like, that doesn't I, believe the, I believe that the range on these cars, too, is only like 250, 260K. Yeah, a couple hundred kilometers. And then you come into the next range of issues of yeah. batteries work best at certain temperatures. So... When you're driving your car and you get stuck in roadworks on a mountainside and it's late oh. afternoon and the temperature drops right down, you may think you have a couple hundred kilometers out of that battery, but suddenly temperatures drop low enough to affect the battery. You've just lost half of your battery capacity. You no longer have a couple hundred kilometers. You have a hundred kilometers and you're going the wrong direction from your house. Bugger. Yeah, look, as I said to you, as a city person, um, as opposed to you being a country person, I would go the Tesla. Um, but if you are living in the bush and places like that, remote towns, the, the opportunity to get into an electric vehicle is you can't do it. It doesn't exist. No, I would be very surprised to see a Tesla in this town ever. <laughs> not in my mm. lifetime. Well, not unless they pull it in on a tow truck because the nearest, where's the nearest recharge station? You reckon Adelaide? Oh uh, yeah. I think I did see some in Adelaide. I didn't see any in the other towns. Mm. Maybe Gawler just outside of Adelaide. It's pretty advanced, but yeah, yeah. Even that, you're only talking forty minutes out of Adelaide. It is an interesting subject and one that uh, you know you could talk about all day. And I'm sure lots of people have had this discussion before. But um, I think we've come up with our answers. You're going the V8. I'm going the Tesla because of where we live, and because and of it's not, it's not because of the cool aspects of it, like you know, all its technological features. It's just because it's practical for your city there. Yeah, oh, oh no, they're, they're, they're you know, I, I'd li I like the uh, gadgets that come along with the Tesla as well, the little bits and pieces and electronics. I do love that. Yeah. Anyway. Sorry, mate, am I boring you? Hello? <laughs> Well, you can just edit it and, and, and just end it.